I was so excited I got up at 5.30 in the morning and I was in here by 6.30 sanding. And the reason is I made this cutting board the other day. It's huge. It's perfect. It's the best size because you can actually cut a bunch of vegetables and put the sloppy bits on one side and the good bits on the other side and still have working room because most cutting boards are so puny, they're virtually useless after one scallion has been cut. So this is working great though, except that it weighs about 30 pounds. Cause look, it's a whole bunch of maple boards. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 25 that I glued together. It's called laminating. It's really heavy. Then I sanded the edges and, and I had to plane it and it was a lot of work, but it's gorgeous, but it's heavy, but I can't keep dragging it out from underneath the sink and putting it on the counter. It's wearing me out. So I had this idea. I would make a rolling cart and it would become an island of serenity in my kitchen where I could go and chop things. Because you know, there's just never enough surface area. So look, it's on casters. And it's got two shelves so that you can store your cutting utensils or your stock pot or whatever you want to store there. It's a beauty. And it's got all this really cool hardware stuff that I'll show you how to do. It's actually pretty basic. And so I'll show you how to do all that. And my favorite thing about this is that I always wanted to be a flight attendant. So now I can just back up around the house going, cocktails, sir, are you awake? Are you awake, sir? Sir, do you want to eat? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to be happy. So to start with, I'm going to put this upside down because I'm going to mount the legs on the bottom and I'm going to also hoopla. <laughs> you see now. Okay, let's just all calm down. I'm just really excited. I really like building stuff like this. So you take the legs and you put them up in where the, the positions that they're going to go in because you kind of need to eyeball it and see if it looks right or not. And so um, there they are. And you want to inset the legs maybe an inch or so. I didn't quite do it enough over on this one, so I'm going to just set them in a, a bit more, especially because the cutting board's a bit bigger. But you don't want to set them in too far because the, the farther out they are, the more stable the cart is, especially when you're careening around at high speeds in your kitchen. It should be rideable, really, th this cart. It sh you should be able to actually mount it and go for a spin. Okay, so that looks about right. I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to take a square and make sure that the little things are square. There. And then you, you put the apron uh, or an apron piece that isn't cut to length yet in place. So I'm going to mark on both of these, um, in, in each case for the apron pieces, I'm going to mark where the leg ends so I know how long to cut my apron. So I'm going to put the apron in place and mark it. See what I mean? Because everything's not always square because you've belt sanded these legs possibly or you know they might not be totally square. So y you have to custom fit each of the apron pieces. So I'll just keep going with this actually. Just throw that down so I can get my mark like this. And then I'll cut that and put it in place. And then I'll, uh, once I get all the apron pieces cut, then I can proceed to um, the next stage, which is, well, I'll just get there. <laughs> it's just too many words. Okay, so I'm going to go here. One of the main reasons for making a butcher block cart is that it makes you look like a gourmet chef. Now, on a skill level, you might max out at a fried egg sandwich, but you look good. And it's never how much you know, it's how much you look like you know. Okay, all done. No, I was just teasing. I just sort of dry fitted everything. So I've cut all the apron pieces to length and I've put them in place and I decided to give myself about a 3 8 of an inch reveal. That's this little inset here. So it looked kind of swish, as they say. Here's a little tip. If you know how I was trying to measure all these legs, it's better to just take a little tri square when you're setting the legs. If you set it on a quarter, well, an inch and a quarter is what I ended up with. You just go like that and then 
you know, there's none of that measuring and sloppy business, okay? So that's just a good little tip. So what I've done here is I've marked a line. I'll just take these legs out of the way. And I, also, I also numbered the, uh, the legs so that each of them has their own place. Okay, one, two, three, four. And that means I can also number the boards. So the apron boards, so when I put them in place, I know they're going into the right spot. See that mark? Why did I do that? See, I did it here, did it here, and I did it there. There's the secret, it's this little strip. Now, the, the, the reason I did this is because, look, how are, you've got to attach this cutting board to the apron somehow. How are you going to do that? You can't, you can't screw through here. You just, they don't make screws that long and it would look stupid. And screwing through on an angle is going to be very tricky. So all you do is you cut these little strips, you screw them to the, to the cutting board, okay? And then you glue this side of the strip to the apron piece. All right, so that's what holds the actual apron. The apron's actually glued to this little strip, right? And that keeps everything really sturdy. Okay, so let's just, I wanted to show you really quickly how I made these little strips. This is kind of a cool tip, because this hole is actually countersunk, so that the, the top of the screw just disappears into the top of that hole. It's, it looks really pretty. The way to do that is either to buy a countersink bit for 20 bucks, or, just get one size of drill bit that'll fit the screw and go through your wood and then get a, a larger drill bit, two drills, no waiting, and put it right on top of the first hole, that deep, so you can set the dimple. Cool. All right, so what I want to do next then is slide all these strips right up against that line that I made, and they're just sort of need to be roughly centered on, on the line. And then I'm going to attach them all. Ooh, that's not the right one, is it? I'm going to attach them all. And then we get to this very cool part, which is putting in the metal corner bracket hardware. These are the coolest things. So I'm going to set all these strips in place first, and then we'll deal with the apron-y bit. Woodrow Wilson said that without enthusiasm, there's no progress in the world. And that's true for woodworking, too. Well, it's true for the whole human race, since if people weren't enthusiastic about each other, there wouldn't be any babies. Although, that's probably not what Woodrow meant. Okay, the strips are in, man. Okay, I, and I didn't, I really overdid it with the number of holes I needed, so I just used every other hole. I was a little over the top with my, my screwing earlier, but you know, that's just one way to be, really. And now I am at the point where I'm working with the magical hardware, the brackets. So see, this thing just slides into place, so you have to cut slots for it, right? Because of the way they're, they're made, they just slide in. So how do you find the marks? To, to know where to slide them in. You put your apron bits up against the strips and you put your leg in place on the lines that you had marked earlier, way earlier, at the very beginning. And you set your reveal so that everything looks good, right? It all feels square. Now, magically, you should be able to just set this in place. Ooh, don't do it that way. That's a mistake. You can't get your line from going like this. You can't do it. Look, it'll be way too wide because it has to slide in. See, it's got that little angle there. So you have to put it on the top of the boards. And then you put a mark for where you're going to have to saw to get the slot, to make the slot. But here's the tip. I've done it. It looks good. Everything's square. I don't know if it is or not. I'm going to measure. I've got two inches on this side. And I've got two and an eighth on this side. So you have to split the difference. Otherwise, it's not going to be square. You're going to end up with this thing installed on a cockamamie angle. And then it's very difficult to drive the bolt through. Just a little tip. OK, so I need to cut these. 
So to do that, I'm going to make that mark a little bit more complete. Also, once you've got your, your mark, whatever it is, two and an eighth, or what, whatever the perfect split of the difference is, you can m measure all the corners. Just cut them to that, cut the slots to that measurement. So I'm going to mark my line. There. Now, for heaven's sake, mark your board for the bracket when you're in place with it because it's so easy to just make a little tick mark and then get over here and by mistake you flip the board and you end up with the slot on the wrong side which is socially quite embarrassing. So I'm going to put this in place. I've adjusted the depth of my blade on my saw so it's quite shallow and I did that because I want it to just be deep enough to accept the steel of the, of the bracket. Don't want to cut the board in half by mistake. All right, and I tried to do this with a hand saw, but the kerf it leaves is so narrow, the kerf being this little slice, that the darn bracket didn't even fit in it. So I'm going to go with a circular saw. And I'll just clamp this down. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cut all the, the holes for the brackets. Then I'll just glue the apron in place along those little strippies. And then we're ready to bolt the legs to that baby. Okay, my rolling butcher block card is, is very much coming together here, but not without some personality challenges. I really struggled with this because, look, I've had to cut this baby a little bit extra wide because it didn't fit. I got all these apron pieces glued on, attached to the strips, and I put this in place just to check it. Well, it didn't want to go. All right, so I had to pull the board off wet with glue all over it and cut that kerf a little bit wider. So it, it can happen. Don't worry about it though, just keep going. And then if you still find that you've got a tight fit happening, take some tongue and groove pliers and just tweak the flanges on this thing until you get it to go in. And I'm going to be satisfied with whacking this with a hammer at this point. That's just the way. Try it end for end. There, that'll do. Okay, so now the magic of hardware, see? See how pretty this is? Four screws in the bracket, and then this big giant hanger bolt goes into the leg and just tightens with a wing nut. A wing nut. Look, that is so solid. Huh? Let me show you how this works. Over here to the board, okay? I'm gonna make a flat spot so that I can screw this hanger bolt into place. See, it's threaded for wood on this end, and this is a machine thread so that I can put the wing nut on. So. You have to chisel with the bevel down, otherwise you'll just end up chopping off the whole end of the board because you'll go too deep. And use the biggest hammer you can find, and when you're using a striking implement, wear your safety glasses. And so you'll just take some progressive cuts out of it until you have a flat spot that you can attach, um, that you can drill easily into. One thing you have to expect when you're trying to keep going on a job is that you're going to get distracted. And then you're going to start fooling around without even realizing it. And that's when you have to be alert and rigorously haul yourself back to the task at hand. Okay, so. I've got a nice flat spot that I feel confident about drilling into, but first I have to mark it for where that little bolt's gonna go. So I'll pop it in place like this, and I'll get the hanger bolt, which also should be really called a dewworm bolt, because look, it's got rings that look just like a dewworm. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and just press hard into that to make a mark. There's my little mark, bring it back over here. It's a really subtle little mark, but it'll do. And tighten that up. And then I'm going to drill in to this. And then the only tricky part of this really is attaching the hanger bolt because it has nowhere to grab with. So let me just drill the hole and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so there's the hole. Now you take your bolt and you 
put it into the hole, just get it started with your fingers, and then the junction between where the machine bolts end and the wood threads, the machine threads end and the wood threads begin is where you put the tongue and groove pliers. Just tighten them on there because you're never going to actually require that part of the bolt. And then just go around these backwards like that until it's gone in about an inch and a half or so. So it's really nice and solid. And then I'm just going to pop the leg into the bracket. And I'm off to the races. I want to put some shelves on this thing so that I can store stuff and some casters so it rolls around. As I was saying earlier, at some point you're going to get distracted. In fact, you may not even notice you're distracted because your distraction has become a job in itself. And soon you're working just as hard at this distraction as you were working on the job you're supposed to be doing. But if you really summon your concentration, you can ignore that fact and maintain your distraction. Okay, I'm experimenting with the levels of my shelves because I want my big giant pots down here. And then I want just like more subtle things on this level. So I hate seeing things where so I'm just clamping them in place. But I hate seeing it when people put um, exactly symmetrical shelf depths. You know, forget that. You need a little asymmetry in life. All right, so there. So now I'm just going to feed through these little uh, one by two pieces that are making my shelf. And I've had to round off all the corners on them too. It just is endless, the sanding thing. So you have to be philosophical about it. You also should be philosophical about when you drop things a lot. You know, if people tease, you just tell them you have a medical condition that makes you drop things. And then they'll be quiet because, you know, now they're feeling bad. That works pretty well. OK, so I'm just going to center these all and space them properly and, and screw them down. And then the final step is putting the casters on the bottom. And then me and my cart are going on a trip. Nothing like the feeling of a good screw sinking into maple. Ah, look at that. The casters are on. Now I'm going to tip it over. Oh, it's really gotten heavy by now, baby. And look, it's so convenient. Will that be beef or chicken? Beef or chicken, sir? Huh? I'm all set. I can have a life of adventure now. All right, so I'm going to oil the whole, all the legs and all the shelves and the apron with the same oil that I put on here on the surface, which is mineral oil. And you need to re-oil it every month or so. So it's not that hard, right? The hardware goes into the corners. I mean, what is hard about this? Nothing. The hardest thing about this is having to cook every night and chop the vegetables on it, but now that'll be a new pleasure. All right, so listen, there is a couple of, there are a couple of gentlemen in New Brunswick in Canada, and they're making their own kind of butcher blocks, but they got a special twist on it. Here it is, right here. And the names of the artists are John and Craig Young. And what they're doing is they went to a flooring, a hardwood flooring guy and said, you know, We'll take your stuff that you're not using because we got ideas. So this is actually made from cut off ends of hardwood flooring. So it's a whole bunch of maple, you know, and maple can be expensive. So this is a great use of it. And then when they're done, they send all their shavings away to a dairy farmer who uses them as cow bedding. And if they have any other little bits of wood, they put them into garlic boards and oyster shucking boards, you know, smaller boards, not big honking boards like this. So see, isn't that pretty? And they've got a towel rack here. And that, that is the beautiful color of a, an oiled finish as it comes up. Their, their maple looks really good. So those guys are hot. So now I'm just going to go get a bunch of stuff to chop up, and then I'll be replete. Whatever the task you set for yourself, you're always searching for that moment of personal validation. So when you finally get it, 
It's important to flounce around like there was absolutely nothing to it.